The recommended operating temperatures for CO2 lasers is to stay between 59 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. With the addition of the chiller, staying below a certain temperature is no problem. But what about raising the temperature when it gets too cold in the winter months? Freezing water inside your laser system can cause the laser tube to crack. There also seems to be a lot of differing opinions on using antifreeze inside the coolant system on CO2 lasers. In my opinion, I don't see what harm it would cause, but it doesn't achieve what I'm trying to do. My goal is to keep the temperature raised at all times, even when I'm not using the laser. Say my shop got down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I want my water temperature to still be at at least 59 degrees so that I can come out there, power on the laser, and use it at all times. So to do this, I've purchased a aquarium heater with an adjustable thermostat on it. The lowest temperature on it, conveniently enough, is 60 degrees. So I'm gonna set it down to the lowest temperature. Now I'm gonna place that directly inside the chiller. The fit is almost perfect. Now the instructions on the heater say to keep it submerged. So I'm gonna add extra distilled water to try to cover as much of the heater as possible. This will also help with the transfer of heat from the coils. Here the clock is at 521 and the temperature was 13 degrees Celsius. I'm going to keep a record of how long it takes to get the operating temperature up to an optimal range. The chiller is nice to have, but it's not necessary. The same techniques I'm showing in this video can be done with the original cooling system that came with your laser, or the five gallon bucket that I used to use. Here I am labeling the power cord to the heater. Theoretically though, with it being set at 60 degrees, the thermostat should not turn on once the laser is up to temperature, so conserving energy should not be an issue. With it being the winter months, I am trying to rush this video out as soon as possible to hopefully save a lot of people from ending up with cracked tubes. If you found this video helpful, I hope you might consider subscribing to my channel, checking out my other videos, or even following along with other laser upgrades that I plan on doing in the weeks to come. The temperature is now in range, and it only took about 25 minutes inside the chiller itself. Now my hopes was that with the temperature being warmer in the chiller, the water would flow through and get to the tube itself. Because the idea is warm water will rise and cold water will sink. But I believe that with this laser system, there is a flow sensor that is stopping that from happening passively on its own. So I even tried to lower the chiller off of the buckets to get it down lower, but even with that, the flow just wasn't happening. And in comparison, now I've got the pump turned on, the water is flowing, and now we can see that the water heat is transferring up to the top of the laser and has brought it into range. But the thought of using my $600 chiller as a pump 24-7 just didn't sit well with me. So I came up with another solution instead. But first I'm going to take the plastic cap from the water jug and I'm going to use it as a dust cap to go on top of the heater to keep dust and evaporation at a minimum. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Yeah, that is like almost perfect. Instead of using my $600 chiller as a pump, I opted to purchase this $10 pump that I found online that I would be able to install in line with the coolant lines already on my system. Input, output. Make 
make sure you get your flow going the right way. That way. Output, input. This is going to be messy. Here I'm just using little twisty ties that I had left over from my X-Carve CNC just as a temporary way to hold everything nice and tight. I'm going to prime it with the big pump first. Yeah, you can see it's leaking. Seems to be working. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. All right, now I'm going to plug in the uh, the small pump. Small pump plugged in. There it goes. This has got to be one of my most boring videos, so I doubt they're listening or watching at this point. But I still want to take a second to thank my patrons on Patreon especially Kyle Hickson, my top supporter. Thank you for your support. It makes taking breaks from custom orders and doing videos like this a little bit easier. So the goal is that pump will run 24 seven. The heater can run 24 seven because it has an auto on and off and that will circulate the warm water through the entire system, keeping it from freezing. All right. There we go. I think I'm going to include small hose clamps in the links. You don't have to worry about it leaking because as long as you have a good clamp system on there, I think you're going to be okay because even me tightening those twisty ties with the needle nose pliers seems to be working. I don't see any water coming out at this point. That doesn't mean it won't happen later on. So better safe than sorry. I need to change out all these twisty ties with actual hose clamps. I think that's a lot smarter. I wanted to show you that, that little bracket you can screw into whatever you want. I think this is a good idea to get it up away from the chiller so that if it ever did leak, it would just leak onto the ground rather than on the chiller itself. Again, some reminders, make sure that that heater is completely submerged in water so I overfill my chiller with as much water as I can. You can probably see that it would leak out on the top here, but you just wipe it off. Make sure you make some kind of cap because water will evaporate and also you don't want dust or particles getting in there. Check to make sure there's no air bubbles inside your laser tube either. Well, normally with the chiller, it's got so much pressure, it can force those bubbles out. It's about five minutes later, still no water leaking out. And here is a test showing that the ambient temperature in the garage is 48 degrees. And using just that small pump, it's bringing up the water up to the laser tube and it's achieving 55 degrees. That's not quite hot enough, but I can adjust the temperature on that aquarium heater up to say 65 degrees to make up that heat loss difference. And this is how I winterize my laser. Now it's ready to use at all times, in the summer, in the winter, whenever I need to run a job, the laser is ready to go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.